preparing himself for the story of God using rebound if necessary, bringing every thought into captivity of our Lord Jesus Christ. Let us pray. Now, Heavenly Father, we thank you so much that in eternity past, you took cognizance of us, and because of your fantastic love, you made a provision for our happiness, our blessing, our effectiveness, our success, our promotion, everything, and that that was recorded even before the creation of the world. And then you have done everything necessary for us to succeed in re receiving these things so that if any believer finds himself unhappy, unsuccessful, unfulfilled, frustrated, it's not because of you. It's because of their own decisions which they have made contrary to the fantastic plan. And so as we study this eternal uh, provision that is made by God the Father, May each of us rejoice in who and what you are and the grace that has made it ours. In Jesus' precious name, amen. Once again, open your Bible to Ephesians chapter 1 for a moment. And while we're doing that, let me encourage those who are watching by television or listening by radio to write for the commentary on the portion of Scripture which we're studying which is not Galatians, but it's, I mean, it's not Ephesians, but Galatians. We are actually studying in Galatians chapter 1, verse 3, where we're studying the doctrine of paterology, information about God the Father, and it's available to you. Just write and ask. There are no strings attached. It is provided for you. In the book is this very, very interesting chart, because I have felt that unless there's some way that we visualize these things, we are, it's not going to be possible to understand. And for those who uh, are not familiar, uh, I have already pointed out that the Word of God talks about in two places the fact that there is uh, milk of the Word and there is meat of the Word. Uh, what we're dealing with now is the meat of the Word. It's the, it's the more difficult portions. But you see, you don't grow on milk. You just get a basic establishment you don't grow on it. You grow on meat. And this is what we're talking about. And the principle is that God the Father did certain things for us that are unique to God the Father. God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, each has certain things that each has done for us. Uh, now, God the Father, from the source of three things, His sovereignty, His love, and his omniscience has come up with something which is absolutely fantastic. That is called our portfolio of invisible assets. And I, I encourage you to consistently remember that we're talking about that which is invisible, which means we're not talking about money, we're not talking about a job. We're not talking about some kind of a, an area that is provided for you in the South Sea Islands or something. This was all done in eternity past. And in Ephesians chapter 1, and I'm going to take it from the, perhaps uh, better take it from the expanded, corrected doctrinal translation, uh, which uh, uh, I have... Uh, uh, in the notes, kind of which will be in your, uh, in the book, of course. I'll read it from there. Now there are five uh, aorist tenses in this passage. Now, and the there are uh, aorist uh, indicatives and aorist participles. The word aorist comes from this Greek word.
A-O-R-I-S-T-O-S. The word ar ar aristos means unlimited. The root word for aristos is this word. H-O-R-I-Z-O, horizo. Horizo is the word from which we get horizon. And it means to get the picture. It's one of the words for see. But it means more than just to see. Blepo means see. You look at something and you see it. But horizo means to look and get the picture, just as if you look at the horizon, you get the picture of the whole thing. The concept of the aorist tense, then, is that it is, uh, the, it is the whole picture. It is actually an occurrence without reference to its progress. See, the present tense in the Greek is continuous action, progress. It's, it's, uh, there are different kinds of present uh, tenses, but they all have to do with some kind of progress in time. Imperfect tense is continuous action in past time. Uh, a perfect tense is action in the past with current results. But the aorist tense simply is the picture. It emphasizes the action of the verb. It, it's an occurrence in time. The, the context tells you the time. See? Now, so he, when we talk about five things in Ephesians chapter 1 verses uh, 3 through 8 five things that, that five occurrences five things that have taken place when did they take place well the context tells us this in verse 4 before the creation of the world so we now know the time frame as to when this aorist tense took place before the creation of the world. So now we have the, the time when this occurrence took place. And here's where it says, Worthy of praise and glorification is God, even Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. So we know this is the work of God the Father. And here's the first one. Who hath blessed us? All right, hath blessed us. Now this is an aorist participle. The difference between an aorist indicative and an aorist participle, let's go back here for just a moment. The aorist indicative is, tells us what is the main verb the aorist participle is action which always precedes the main verb. So whatever is an aorist participle took place before the action described by the main verb. So if we find an aorist participle, we want to look for an aorist indicative which tells us that that is the main verb and tells us uh, the hath blessed us so we know that the this blessing uh, takes place uh, to uh, he who hath blessed us with every spiritual blessing in the heavenlies in Christ when he himself elected us elected us is the aorist middle indicative so here is the main verb the main verb is elected us I'll give you the words again in just a moment but for now to let me explain in other words before he elected us before he chose us before he selected us he already designed fantastic blessing for believers who are members of his royal family these uh, uh, Blessings are uh, the part of your portfolio of invisible assets. All right? 
Now we have another participle coming up. So let me read on. I'll read from the beginning. Worthy of praise and glorification is God, even Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with their spiritual blessing in the heavenlies in Christ, when he himself elected us in Christ before the foundation of the world, that we should be set apart and without blame before him, by means of virtue love having predestinated us. All right, predestinated us is the aorist participle. So it, too, takes place before the main verb. All right, now we understand something from the very beginning which needs to be understood. And that is predestination and election have nothing to do with unsaved people. There is a form of um, uh, reasoning that uh, goes around and the philosophies that uh, is, is fallacious reasoning. And if uh, when they read that uh, God predestined us, then the, then the conclusion that they draw is that God must have predestined the unsaved to be lost if he predestined us to have certain things, certain blessings, they must have predestined the unsaved to have uh, to be lost. But see, that is not logical reasoning unless the Scripture tells us that God predestined the, the lost to be lost. There, that is not a, a true a truism. So we're not dealing at all with unsaved people. Now let's stop for a moment before we look at the next two uh, aorist uh, uh, verbs. Let's look at what these words are. This word is, this word, E-U-L-O-G-E-O, -E eulogeo. Now this, of course, means, uh, 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 pardon me, this is ek logeo, pardon me, not, not you, but ek logeo. Ek is a preposition which means from, uh, this, uh, the, from the immediate source. Logeo means to gather or to pick out, or lego is the root word, uh, to pick out or to gather from. And therefore it means uh, a picking out or a selection. Uh, the technical term uh, is election. But uh, the point that is, is made here is this, that uh, God has picked us out to do something good for us, uh, to provide something for us. Uh, he wants to, he has picked out, uh, uh, to, he is selected in order to do something wonderful. And uh, so it's uh, very often tr it translates uh, uh, into, uh, uh, or pardon me, uh, I, I'm looking at the wrong place. Uh, so I, let me do it again, all right? We'll just come back to that. I, my eye slipped down to the second word. From, the first word is, is correctly translated uh, when I had it before, you logeo. E U L O G E O, eulogeo. And uh, this means to cause to prosper. It means to make happy. It means to bestow blessing. The second word is the word ek, lego. E K L E G O. And that means to choose from or to pick from, uh, to select or to elect. So, now note again, we go back to this, the aorist participle. God made a decision that before he even selected us, the aorist indicative, he made a decision to cause us to prosper, to be happy, to, to be blessed. Even before he elected us, he blessed us. And what he's talking about in this blessing is the the uh, portfolio of invisible assets which is designed by God for your eternal blessing. The third word is uh, the word pro orizo, translated predestination. Pro orizo means to determine beforehand. 
So we have the fact that God has determined beforehand and that he is going to make provision for our success. So here we have the first word, God provide, provided blessing, then he provided provision for the blessing before he actually issued the selection of the believer. The next word appears as we move on. Let me read, uh, having predestinated us or having predetermined us to receive adoption as adult sons in the royal family through Jesus Christ, according to the grace purpose of his will, so that we might be to the praise of the glory of his grace. We want to keep that in mind. What is the purpose of it all? That will be a one of the final points. But why in the world has God done all of this for us? So that our lives could be to the praise of the glory of his grace. So that our lives can be a window through which his glorious grace may be seen. God wants to demonstrate his grace. And he can't demonstrate his grace in nature. He can't demonstrate his name if it was a beautiful sunrise or a beautiful sunset. That doesn't tell you anything about grace. He can't tell anything about grace by the, the creation of the physical body, as wonderful as it is. He can't tell anything about grace by, uh, by means of anything that is created. Nothing can tell you about his grace except the life of a, an undeserving person who has utilized God's divine operating assets and whose life has come to the place where now the glory of his grace can be seen in the life of that person. God picks you up and puts you up before the world to say, take a look. Now in this person you can see my grace. That's what he wants to do. All right? So he says that we might be to the praise of his glory by which he has graced us out. That's the fourth word. The fourth word, graced us out. You see, this is erroneously translated in the King James Version, accepted. For he has graced us out in the beloved one, Jesus Christ. This is erst, active indicative from the Greek verb, looks like this. It's an omega. C-H-A-R-I-S-T-O-O. Charis O-O is the, the verb for grace. Grace is the, uh, the substitute. Charisto is the grace, is the verb. Charisto, he has graced us out in the Lord Jesus Christ, which is positional truth. In other words, uh, this being graced out refers, again, to the portfolio of invisible assets because they are all yours on the basis of grace, unearned and undeserved from the very beginning. When you believed on the Lord Jesus Christ, that first day you believed on the Lord Jesus Christ, why, uh, already in the uh, files of God was a portfolio and had your name on it. And the portfolio contained all of the assets that God had already provided for you even before you believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. She says, By which he has graced us out in the Beloved One, in whom we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins, according to the riches of his grace. Which grace he has, and here's the fifth verb, he has caused to superabound toward us. And this is the aorist active indicative from the word perisugo. looks like this in the Greek. P-E-R-I-S-S. -S. E-U-O, perisuo. This does mean superabundance. It means to uh, sing over and above the normal. And this is the summary of everything that he has These for. invisible assets. All right, now, with our uh, uh, eye on the chart again, uh, we go back to the chart and we note that God the Father, from the source of his sovereignty, his love, and his omniscience. Now, we're dealing with each of these three words. And I have already dealt with the first two. Uh, sovereignty means God's absolute will. God made a sovereign decision totally based on nobody else or nothing else that he determined that he was going to bless members of the human race. He was going to make them happy. He was going to do some wonderful things for them. He doesn't have to clear it with anyone because he is the eternal God. Based upon his 
unconditional love for the human race. This is an unconditional, it's an infinite love. And we studied this last time. What does it mean that he has an infinite love? An infinite love means that it never increases, it never decreases, uh, it is never influenced by emotion, has nothing to do with what you do or how you live or how you respond or whether you're good or bad. God loves you with a perfect love at all times. Now, from this, he has come up with the very things that he knows will bless you because he is also omniscient. And so let's take some, a few notes on what does it mean to be omniscience. What is omniscience? Well, it comes from two words, omni meaning all and science meaning knowledge. Here's the technical definition. God knows perfectly, eternally, and simultaneously all that is knowable. Whether it is actual or possible, including all of man's thoughts, motives, decisions, and actions. Because God is infinite, His knowledge is infinite. Infinite means without bound. There are no boundaries to his knowledge. Since he is eternal, his knowledge is eternal. He knows perfectly well everything. And simultaneously means that as far as God is concerned, there's no past, present, or future. He doesn't come to know something tomorrow. He has known from eternity past everything at one point in time. The future is just like the past to God. He knows all the facts about every person in all of human history, as, and, as well as the actualities and the possibilities. He knows what you might do. He knows what you could do. He knows what's possible for you to do. And he knows what you actually do do. He knows what you uh, think before you do it. He knows the thought process, and this is very, very important because here's what happens. Going back to our chart, God, from the source of these three attributes, has provided, first of all, primary assets in your portfolio of invisible assets. These are the primary assets which are related to election and predestination. Those are, were, uh, were set in there. Uh, it, it, the, this has to do election and predestination have with equal have to do with equal privilege and equal opportunity for every believer. And we'll deal with these in individual things, but I want to show you the, the correlation between the two. But his omniscience also knew something. He is a, his, a, his a, omniscience knew all of the secondary assets, all of the personnel assets, all of the unique assets that God makes available. Now, the, all of these things have to do with the believer and his response. See? In other words, you have a free will and volition. How will you use volition? Uh, you have the filling of the Holy Spirit for production. Will you use the filling of the Spirit for production, or will you use energy of the flesh? Uh, you will have undeserved suffering. Uh, will you uh, learn from this, or will you react against it? 
Okay, you will. Uh, you have the uh, necessary impact. Will you have? Uh, uh, will you utilize the impact or, that you have, God has given to you? Personal assets, spiritual gift. Will you use the spiritual gift or will you not? The God, your unique assets, indwelling of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Spirit. God the Holy Spirit. Will you utilize these or not? All right. Here's here's the then here's your 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 chart. Primary assets plus secondary assets. Personnel assets and unlimited or, or unique assets are going to result in something. God has designed all this blessing for you. It's the first place. He has designed a blessing. Not only has He designed the blessing, but He has also given to you into predestination to the provision of how you can reach those blessings. Now his omniscience reaches down into into time to see how you are going to respond to this. Are you going to be positive or negative? Are you going to be a winner or a loser? And if you if you are a positive, if you are positive, then the the uh, primary assets plus these additional assets are going to add up for you into fantastic escrow assets. Assets which are beyond anything you can dream of, anything you can imagine, anything which you can think of. They are so fantastic, so tremendous, that you couldn't in a million years, if you had every opportunity, ever think of all the things that God has for you. This too was provided in eternity past for you. And here is the thing. You see, God knew in eternity past how you would respond. And in knowing the actual response he takes and uh, utilizes this in determining whether or not you'll ever get these uh, these assets which are uh, yours in the escrow account so omniscience doesn't make you do something omniscience records every opportunity that you have in time and how you take advantage of those opportunities when you have decisions to make when you have priorities to set now you th you say to yourself well uh, whatever let's take uh, let's take this coming Sunday Lord's Day here is Sunday okay. and it happens to be the first day of November and uh, as far as you're concerned it hasn't been lived at all of course it hasn't and you come to that beautiful day and you wake up in the morning and you have choices or decisions to make. And you're free to make those decisions because God has given you a free will. But in His omniscience, God knows the priorities you're going to set for Sunday. God knows the decisions you're going to make as far as what's important to you for Sunday. Not only does he know it, he, today he knew it in eternity past. Therefore, while God has made this, this fantastic blessing, reserved this fantastic blessing, put all this uh, provision in your uh, portfolio, he finds here negative volitional decisions. The negative volitional decisions, therefore, limits what he can do for you. He cannot do what he wants to do for you, and therefore you end up a loser because of the decisions you made, but he knew you'd make that decision in eternity past, and therefore it's recorded for eternity in your portfolio of invisible assets. Here was potential, here was possibility, here was everything that I made available, but in your own free will and volition, you said, I want to be a loser. You said, I will make the choice. I know what's better for me, and it's better for me to play golf Sunday than it is to be in Bible class. That's my decision. God says, fine, it's your decision, live with it. But don't ever look for escrow blessing because it's not yours. You'll never get it because you're a loser. And you're a loser because you choose to be a loser. It's not because I have made you a loser. I knew what you were going to do. I didn't make you do it. And you can visit the record center in heaven someday and see what could have been yours. But you knew more than God what would make you happy. And so your golf game, and I'm doing it because I don't think there are any golfers here. 
So I don't want to step on your foot personally. It's your business. How you live your life is entirely up to you. But you said, God, I'd much rather have 18 holes in one today. Not that you would. Even if you were great, you wouldn't get it. I'd rather have that than any one of these fantastic, beyond belief, beyond imagination blessings that you have for me. I'll be happier. I'll be much more content with 18 holes in one than I could ever be with all those wonderful things that you have for me in my portfolio of invisible assets. Now, who's the dumb one? Who's the dumb one? It's just like a child. They don't know what's good for them. And they keep saying, I want this, I want that. And you say, but it's not good for you, honey. It's not good for you, sweetie. I can't let you have it. It isn't good for you. If you let them have what, you, what they think is good for them, they would be satisfied with eating crumbs. I have had an inundation of a herd of mouses in my desk. I forgot I had some cough drops there from five years ago. I just looked tonight in there. But we got, I haven't heard a coughing mouse in this church for ages. Those things are so smart, they unwrap the cough drops first and then eat them. Can you imagine that little creature, that beady eye little beast sitting in my drawer unwrapping that? That's hard. That, that really is, drives my imagination up a wall. So I have provided a feast for him called Decon Mouse Proof. <laughs> Come to me, my little Mickey Mouse. But you see, that's what we're dealing with. The omniscience of God has uh, uh, provided for every believer, and God has entered it into the computer of divine decrees. Now, uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 9, describes something about these, some of the things. It says, uh, in, if, but as it stands permanently written in Isaiah 64, 4, No eye has seen, no ear has heard, no mind has conceived what God has prepared for those who love Him. But God has revealed them to us by His Spirit. And that is, God has revealed not the specifics, but the fact that there are, for us, escrow blessings which are beyond what the eye has seen, beyond what the ear has heard, beyond what the mind has been has, is able to conceive. But uh, it is for those who uh, God has prepared for those who, please note, who love Him. Where does love for God begin? It begins in gate number five of the edification of the uh, the divine dynasphere when you move from uh, you, spiritual adolescence to spiritual adulthood and that's when you begin to get the the first parts of your escrow blessing you get a few at the point of salvation and then god has uh, the couple that are yours for childhood but when you get into spiritual adulthood god begins to give them to you but when you reach spiritual maturity that's when the the doors are opened and God really pours these things out. And uh, it's, it's really wonderful what God has given for each believer. Now, uh, we, we, when I have in the chart the primary assets, you'll notice that beyond the word primary assets, and I, I hope I, I apologize for not having the the transparency up here, but I, I will have it. The primary assets. You'll notice the word computer assets. Now, these are computer assets. That's just a term that uh, uh, an RBT has uh, has coined. Uh, but the primary assets are really simply election and predestination.
Those are the things that we're talking about. Now, under each of these two, you have equal privilege and equal opportunity for everyone. You see, the point is this. The believer who learns about these things, and that's what our purpose in teaching you is, it's going to change your outlook on life. You learn what these invisible assets are that God has for you so that you're able to think in terms of these things as life goes on. And the greatest thing that you'll ever learn from this is equality. We, you'll never again look at yourself and suppose that you are inferior or superior based on any human factor such as skin color, nationality, genetics, economic status, success or failure. That is how man thinks. But when God thinks in terms of you as a believer, he thinks in terms of total equality. There is nobody who's better, there's nobody who's worse, and anybody who comes along with this phony concept of uh, self-esteem as saying my self-esteem is too low or my self-esteem is too high is, is an idiot because they don't understand uh, the Bible. The Bible says as far as self-esteem is concerned, you are uh, the same as everybody else. You're no better, you're no worse. You're no uh, 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 smarter, no dumber. You may have different amounts of, of, of intelligence over here in the human realm, but when it comes to God and what He has provided for you, every member of the human race is equal. And no matter who you are, whether you're a winner or a loser down the line, whether you use your free will and volition to go positive or negative, doesn't make a bit of difference to God. He has provided for you equal privilege and equal opportunity for success. In other words, you've got just as much money in the spiritual bank as anybody else. You have just as much resources in the spiritual bank. Now, there are some of us who just can't hardly do anything. A tool in my hand becomes a weapon. I'm no good at that kind of thing. I don't like to do it, and I don't uh, do well at it. Uh, if, uh, if I uh, have uh, four legs on a chair and I'm supposed to make them equal, I'll cut the legs off in small increments before they'll ever be equal, and probably not then, because I'll never get... No matter what I do, I'll measure three times, cut, and it'll still wobble. And I'll try again, and I'll still wobble. I just, I'm just not adept at those things. And, but regardless of all of these things, when it comes to the spiritual... Uh, situation and the portfolio of invisible assets every believer ends up uh, with the sa starts off with the same thing and so you regard yourself as a person in the sight of God not as Jew or Gentile not as uh, uh, English or Irish or Polish or uh, Jewish or whatever and not as black or white or red or yellow you do not regard yourself in, with any in any of those things, nor do you regard anyone else with that. Uh, that. This eliminates this, this stupidity uh, of, of uh, putting into uh, certain categories of uh, people, like everybody who's Polish is stupid. You know, the old um, Polak jokes, you know. Uh, every black person ought to be able to dance a jig. Uh, every Irishman ought to be able to... Uh, uh, every Scotchman is tight is, a, is a, uh, 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 with his money. Every Irishman is, a, uh, well, a drunkard. I mean, that's what they figure. That's why Irish wakes last a week. They're never sure if they're dead or they're dead drunk. So uh, that's the way it is. But that, all of these things are, 
are human and they're never the issue. God, people are always comparing themselves with, with one another. And where they compare themselves among themselves, God says, they're not wise. But there is always someone who's handsomer than you are or prettier than you are if you're a, a, a female. Someone who's much more beautiful than you are. As far as God's concerned, who cares? Irrelevant, immaterial. Someone has a better personality than you have. So what? God says that's immater irrelevant, immaterial. Some has greater, someone says greater intelligence than you are. So what? Uh, and uh, you're going through life with this inferiority complex. Oh, woe is me. I am undone. I, 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 I. And, and that's ridiculous because you're not better or worse than anybody else. You're a person. And in the sight of God, He has provided with you equal privilege and equal opportunity. And it doesn't make any difference what any of these things add up to. You have the fantastic assets, the primary assets, that God provides for you. And they're going to be yours and yours forever. Nobody can change them. Nobody can take them away. You see, the God has placed these things in an account. And he has limited to the fa himself to the fact that he cannot reach in and take those things out. They're already there. He, he put them there in eternity past. In fact, he deposited them before any creation. We, as we saw with the, with the uh, Aris participle, God designed the blessing before he, his omniscience determined your uh, volition. He put them all there. And so if you look upon it in a, in a monetary analogy, God has put a million dollars in your account, or a billion dollars, or a trillion dollars, however, how do you want to look at it? Uh, but we're not talking about dollars, we're talking about assets, invisible assets. He's put a trillion uh, invisible assets in your file, in your portfolio, and it's there for you. Now, how you're going to draw on these things is the source of how you're going to use the secondary assets, how you're going to use the okay, personnel assets, how you're going to use the unique assets okay, in time. But God wants you to understand them. And He has already also designed your escrow blessing. This escrow blessing was designed before God's omniscience looked down into the secondary assets, secondary tertiary assets. Before God looked at your free will and volition and omniscience, He provided the computer assets, the primary assets, and the escrow assets. And these escrow assets are all listed there for you. Now, the reason we use the term escrow is very simple. Uh, escrow is a deed or a bond, which is a, or some other written agreement. And it is delivered from the party of the first part to the party of the second part. But it is deposited with the party of the third part until the party of the second part meets certain conditions. God the Father is the party of the first part. He has designed these magnificent blessings for you. He has turned them over to the party of the third part, which is the Lord Jesus Christ, who is the grantor. For your behalf, the party of the second part is you, me, the believer. And the condition is volition. What will we do with what he has provided for us as far as volition is concerned? And uh, once this believer has utilized what God has provided for him to advance spiritually to the place where he reaches spiritual adulthood, then the Lord Jesus Christ, the agent is responsible to release all of those escrow blessings to this believer, the party of the second part. And what is the great condition 
Well, as I said, it's spiritual advance. It's the fulfillment of the plan of God for your life. And what's the fulfillment of the plan of God? The fulfillment is to grow up to where the character of the Lord Jesus Christ is formed inside of you by means of Bible doctrine plus the filling control of the Holy Spirit until the character of Christ is formed inside of you. Once you have fulfilled the plan of God by your spiritual advance to maturity, God the Son literally opens the windows of heaven and pours these things upon you. At the point of salvation, then, we receive our primary assets of election and predestination. And then at, uh, uh, we make a decision as to how we're going to utilize those things and how we end up depends on the decisions that we make day in and day out as to what will be the important things in our life and God literally says look I made you I created you there's nothing about you I do not know I know what you think at all times I know what you really like you may think that what you want is and then fill in the blanks like somehow or other when they're young every girl thinks that she has to find the most handsome guy around isn't it interesting that most of them don't marry the handsomest guy around obviously that's true none of you is 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 the handsomest guy around you know all of you say well they were all a lot of guys handsomer than me but she didn't she, she but you don't know what she thought of when she was just a teenager you know she was, she was just going for the hunk and all she looked at it did she ended up marrying you either she was desperate no no I mean no different things uh, maturity changed you see but how wonderful it is that God knowing you so well has designed an escrow account that is absolutely sure to be what you want, what you really want. Not what you think you want, but what you really want. Because he knows how to truly satisfy. Years ago, there, the, one of the large cigarette companies made a, uh, had their, 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 his motto was, they satisfy. Now, think of the stupidity. If they did, after the first one, you'd never take another one, would you? Obviously, they don't satisfy. They should have had this up, they enslave. Now, that would have been true. But one thing is, they don't satisfy. Because there's no satisfaction. It is like the Carnation Company used to say, from contented cows. Their, their milk came from contented cows. Somebody else came up and said, our cows are not contented. They're always striving to do better. But, you know, now, what's, you know, satisfy. But God knows what to, how to satisfy you, you see. He does know what it is that will truly make you happy. Have there ever been times in your life when you thought, if I just had so-and-so, I'd be happy, and you got it, and somehow or other there was, there was not happiness there? I've had that on a few vacations. I've, well, I've been looking forward to the vacation, looking forward to the vacation. I'll never forget, well, years and years ago, as a kid, we, we, had an, uh, we got this brochure about this beautiful vacation with a babbling brook, and it, it was a paradise. It was a paradise. And we, we made reservations sight unseen, and we went there and talk about a paradise. Two dice would have been better than what we said. The babbling brook was a mud hole out behind the back. It didn't babble. It didn't even ooze. It didn't gurgle. It didn't do anything. 
the uh, the cabins were old and dilapidated. The only reason they were standing, the termites were holding hands. The uh, the the uh, it, it's, it had a convenient restroom just down and around the path, and it was so it was just absolutely terrible. It was terrible, and uh, so it, it it isn't what I it wasn't what they painted it and what I had dreamed it to be, but all of us have in mind what we think will make us happy but you see the problem is we really don't know what makes us happy but the creator of the universe is well acquainted with what will make you happy and in your escrow assets he has provided those things what do you consider success well some businessmen consider success uh, becoming the uh, president of a corporation and they've achieved it and they found that it has had its terrible price and that is, has destroyed their family or whatever, many, many other things. Um, having a lot of money in the bank. What do you consider success? Well, God knows what is real success for you. And he's designed that in your escrow assets. And in eternity past, he deposited this in your portfolio. Can your portfolio, that, that uh, briefcase, has got uh, one section that says, primary assets. Another section says secondary assets. Another section says personnel assets. Another section says unusual assets. And then it has one large section that has escrow assets. And these are all the things that God wants to pour upon you when you come to that place, when you are prepared for it. Uh, in uh, uh, Proverbs 8.18, uh, he tells us the association of escrow blessing, for he says, doctrine is speaking uh, in Proverbs 8, 18. With me, doctrine, are riches and honor. That's escrow blessing for time. Enduring wealth and prosperity, that's escrow blessing for eternity. Ephesians 3.20, now to him, God the Father, who is able to do infinitely more than all we could ask, or imagine on the basis of the power which is at work for us. That's the computer assets that God has provided for us. All of this is there. Now, how do you start? And how do you keep it up? You do not let anything interfere with the priority of spiritual advance learning doctrine, learning doctrine, applying doctrine, applying doctrine, until the character of Christ is formed inside of you, and in spiritual adulthood, you become the window through which the glory of God is seen by members of the human race. Now, in our next class, I'm going to take in great detail something about this election and predestination and about the equal privilege and the equal opportunity and how it all works together so that you can understand all that God has already done for you. Not that you have to beg Him for or ask Him for, but something He's already done for you that's available to you. So put your chart somewhere where you'll be able to have it. We'll keep the numbers here. It'll be also in the book, and I'll have a, 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 a transparency by our next class. Thank you, Father, for our study. May God the Holy Spirit take these things and make them a source of real encouragement and challenge to each member of the royal family who is here this day, that they may understand that it's all there. It's all there waiting for them. And the only thing that it takes is continuous positive volition toward the Word of God. In Jesus' name, amen. You're dismissed.